There's a great Leonard Cohen lyric, and it goes a little something like this. There's cracks in everything, but that's how the light gets in. It was shared with, to me by a mentor a couple of years ago when I was going through a particularly hard time. And he said to me, man, and all these things that make you unhappy, these cracks, actually had a lot of light through. And at that point in my career, I guess it's probably still true, is that the light actually represented a lot of learning, insights, and tons and tons of painful growth. Hey, my name is Van Puchert, and I believe that most of all's challenges, cracks, are just interesting design challenges in disguise. In this video, um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about regenerative um, design, or as much as I've discovered and learned about that in the last couple of weeks. But most importantly, I'm gonna introduce you to an awesome tool that I'm particularly excited about. It's called Where the Light Gets In. It's a regenerative design field kit. Uh, put together and designed by uh, John Walshier. Okay, I know you want me to open this box, but let me try and quickly do regenerative design a little bit of justice here. So in very short terms is that we should, at least at the moment when we create new product and services, focus on actually not doing any harm within our environment, right? And I think a lot of us are focusing on that at the moment. However, um, according to John um, that is no, no longer enough, right? So, and I agree with that, is that we need to start thinking about products and services that, that not only is uh, profitable for our companies, uh, be it a big corpo or uh, entrepreneur, but we also need to start designing products and services that contribute to the economy, maybe our local economy. We want to make sure that it also contributes and has a positive effect on our society, but then also um, grows our environment. So those are the three pillars that you want to focus on when you create products and services. And if you think about this, that could be quite complicated to keep in mind, right? It's one thing to actually create a product or service in the first place and make sure it's sustainable and profitable. But now how does it contribute to these three elements? And this is where the regenerative design field kit comes in to give you a little bit of a hand. So now we can crack open the box. Nice packaging, um, smithery.com website. You can buy the cars from Artifact site. You've got the Leonard Cohen quote or lyric uh, at the top here with a QR code scanned through the website. Crack this open. Inside you will find 42 cards, two of which is information cards. One set here to explain to you how to use the card deck um, with a QR code that scans through to the website with a very nice article around how this was put together. And then also some acknowledgement around the frameworks that was used incorporated in uh, building out this card deck or this uh, field kit. Um, now you have a set of cards here, they're color coded. You have this beige, green, uh, light green and blue. Um, and I'm gonna talk about the cards in a second though. And they mostly consist out of very key questions. But something that really drew me to this field kit is the, what they call the obligoscope, which is a, it's made from uh, recycled perspex. It is recyclable. And what it is, is a viewer. You can look through it at any object. I'm looking at you at the moment. And on the viewer itself, I'm not sure if you can see this, is that you have questions over here. And uh, the idea is, is that before you start exploring um, how to build things better, is like look at current objects and actually analyze them. So, and, and look through it, frame it through this little tool here. And I found this to be a very nice and neat touch. Um, an experiential element that was brought into my usual card deck experiences. I couldn't wait to get my hands on this. Now, if you look at this, I'm gonna turn this around here. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it, but you'll see there's a question on top here. It's like, what is this? So you'll peer through this viewer and then uh, kind of go through all the questions here. And I'm gonna just quickly read off some of the questions like, what is this, what is it for? How did it get here? How, who uses it? What does it do? When is it used? And what is it made of? Who made it and why does it exist? And I tell you what, I've been running around with this little viewer in my pocket with my son and we've been exploring the world, just peering through this little viewer here. And as I drew his attention to this object, we really started to analyze why certain objects exist. Of course, this is a very important part of the design process is that before you move into design new things, you want to get a deeper understanding of the environment, of the problems, and of the challenges. And then when you understand better, you want to start reframing it. And this is where the question cards then come into play. So now that we've explored through this little magical window what is and answered these questions, how do we explore what could be 
And to do that, we need to explore a couple of other questions. There's a lot more to these cards, but fundamentally, there's some really interesting questions here. So for example, if I grab the first one here from the green pile, um, there's a question here that says, what could we all go without to make this better? So the first thing it does is quickly flick us into a mindset of like, what can we now exclude? But I want to talk a little bit about this card because there's more to these cards than meet the eye. Where do these questions come from? And luckily, John and his team has an answer for this. So if you look at the card and you zoom in a little bit closer, you'll see that there's a label at the top left and a label at the bottom right. Now, the label at the top left is represented by the Design Council's systemic design framework where they lay out four critical roles, therefore four different colors. These critical roles that is acquired for regenerative design, connector and convener, designer and maker, leader and storyteller, and then system thinker, and therefore the four color codes, dark green, beige, lime, and blue. And then within the cards, in each category, you have 10 cards. And the 10 cards is then re represented by 10 capabilities that were taken from the RSA's framework, capability framework. Now, these capabilities are, and here are courage, and then going through it, composure, care, collaboration, critical thinking, communication, change, creativity, curiosity, and citizenship. And if you combine the role with the capability and you think about that, this is where the question comes into play, right? So, uh, for example, you have here, what could we go without to make this better? And if you think a little bit around the role and you consider the capability, it kind of drives you in a direction. And same is true for the other ones. So, for example, if you think about uh, this one, you have here uh, the role as designer and maker, and then some critical thinking. So let's look at the question for the future. Who will touch what we make over the next 20 years? So who will be those users? And uh, hopefully you'll be able to answer that, and that'll address some of the elements within the regenerative design framework. So as a quick recap, you want to get into the field, look at the current state of things through this viewfinder, answering these questions that are conveniently on this little uh, template over here, this viewer, this obligoscope, and then get back and review the questions. Think about future possibilities and how they can address some of the elements um, around regenerative design. And I think this can be all incorporated in whatever design process you, you want to focus on. For me, uh, I can see how this could work, helping to define a problem statement, looking at um, some insights, generation, and then all the way through to ideation. So I'm particularly excited about getting more out of this toolkit. And the fact that it actually breaks the kind of mold of just cards is particularly exciting for my little collection, growing collection of uh, design tools that I have in my cupboard over here. Damn fine toolkit, love it. Been exploring our new city with my son. Um, it's really interesting to see how he sees the world through the viewer and then answering the questions. The answers are always uh, not always what I expect, which is interesting. I'm really excited to see how I can use this in my day-to-day -day practice. But then also, if you're interested to grab a copy and if you want more information, uh, especially around um, how this was put together, the thinking behind it, go to smithery.com. And if you want to grab a copy, I hear there's a new release coming soon, or I read so somewhere. Um, you can go to the artifactshop.com to grab a copy over there. And then, um, as always, I want to thank you for watching. And if you're using or exploring a regenerative design at all, or if there's any other tools you would like me to know about, please let me know. And uh, as always, catch you in the comments. Mm -hmm.